In traditional workflow orchestration environments, the number of servers you have at your disposal is relatively static. That means if your workload mix fluctuates, you may not be able to get additional capacity when you need it. Or you may be managing and paying for lots of resources you're not using. Serverless computing is an execution model in which some or all of capacity planning, configuration management, maintenance, fault tolerance, or scaling of computing resources are managed automatically and dynamically. In this demo, we'll see how you can gain many of these benefits for running your workflows by taking advantage of dynamic infrastructure provided by all cloud vendors together with Control-M's automation API. Let's take a quick look at our environment. You can see here that we have a relatively small number of agents, but when you see this demo progress, I think you will be able to tell the new machines that get added automatically. Let's also quickly look at the host groups we have available. Notice there are no host groups that start with the string SLESS, -S, which is the short form I'm using for serverless. We'll see how dynamically host groups are created to provide the functionality that we're describing. Okay, so let's go to our monitoring domain and order a bunch of jobs. This is simulating jobs arriving unexpectedly. It may be jobs that users are submitting, or this may be jobs that are submitted in response to some kind of events that occur in our environment. Notice there are a bunch of jobs. They're in blue status, which means waiting for host. And if we look at these jobs, as you can see, the status is wait host. And we have three sets of jobs. The first 10 are intended to run on a host group called SLESS AWS. Again, serverless AWS, serverless on GCP, and serverless on Azure. These names are arbitrary, and you will see how we handle them in our environment. What you may also have noticed is that a number of folders have been ordered in response to these job arrivals. And it is this collection of jobs that will do all the work of provisioning agents, configuring them, enabling these jobs to run, monitor their execution, and when they complete, clean up the environment. This approach allows Control-M to react differently to different types of compute requests. We could be using an AMI or an Amazon machine image in the case of AWS. We could be provisioning a machine from scratch on Azure, and we may be able to use templates on GCP. There are, of course, considerations for these various approaches, including security and providing support for IAM roles, managed identities, or default service accounts. There is speed in response and how quickly we can provision these machines. What we are seeing here is that each collection of jobs is managing a specific host group. Let's say in the case of the AWS host group, we are going to provision some EC2 instances. They happen to be based on an AMI that has a pre-installed agent. We'll configure that agent. And once we define that agent in our environment and add it to a host group, these jobs will be in execution. We'll be able to see how long it takes in each of these environments to perform this configuration and get the jobs running. We can see that for AWS, we have already moved on to watching the workload. That should mean several things. One, you can see the jobs are running. The second thing is if we go back to our configuration, we should be able to see some new agents. And here they are. You can see that the, we have configured two additional agents in response to the AWS job flows. The format here is 
the internal host name for each EC2 instance, followed by its instance ID. If we go back and look at our host groups, we will see that some host groups, or at least one, has been added automatically. And indeed, the two new hosts that have appeared as agents are members in that host group. We should expect similar functionality for each of the other cloud environments. For the sake of the demo, we have skipped some of the time it has taken to do some of this configuration. You can see that now we have completed the process in GCP of deploying an agent, and we are now monitoring the work. Again, that should mean that some additional jobs have gone into execution, as you can see here. And if we go over and look at host groups, we should be able to see at least one additional host group for GCP. And indeed, there it is. And of course, if we refresh our list of agents, we can now see that there is a new or an additional machine that is on GCP. Here again, very similar naming convention of the host name followed by a GCP identifier for that compute instance. That is just simply for convenience. If we do need to go to the GCP console or the AWS console, we'll be able to find these specific machines very easily. Let's return now and watch for the Azure processing to reach a similar state. You can see now that we have finished the configuration process on Azure and the jobs in the SLESSAZ host group are now executing. However, you can also see that the AWS collection of jobs has already completed and the GCP one is on the verge of completing. So if we go back and look at what is our list of agents, the AWS agents have now been decommissioned and similarly, the GCP one has. And if we go back to our monitoring view, I am sure we will see that the GCP flow has also completed successfully. And the only dynamic agent left in our environment is the one on Azure. So let's take a little bit of a look at what is going on and how this has been implemented. There is a job running that I did not mention previously but this is the job that makes all of the serverless processing happen. It uses the automation API to query for jobs that are in wait host status. If you're familiar with Control-M, you might know that the default action when a job that has an unknown host group arrives, Control-M will respond by trying to discover that agent. However, this is a system parameter and the first thing we have to do is turn that behavior off so that when jobs arrive with unknown host groups, they simply wait for a host. This job running the script that checks for wait host jobs will discover those jobs. It will then look at conditions. We are looking for conditions that define the host groups that we want to process in this way. And you can see three of them here. For each condition that we find, we then want to find the folder that should be ordered to manage the process that you just saw. And so you can see the combination of these six conditions defines three pairs, a, a host group and its associated folder of jobs to manage it. That folder of jobs, again, will use the Automation API. First, it will use cloud services to launch a machine or several. In the case of AWS, we launched two EC2 instances. For GCP and Azure, we added only one machine. Once those machines are made available, Subsequent steps will then configure the agent and add it dynamically to a host group. And then the watching phase 
will examine whether there are any new jobs or executing jobs that are still using or want to use these new agents in the host group that we have just created. Once there are no more of such jobs, the agent is removed from the host group, the host group is deleted, the agent is deleted from the Control M server, and again, cloud service is used to decommission that machine instance. The result is that you have a completely automatic and dynamic way to request compute, have it provided automatically, have the workflows run, and the resources reclaimed so that you provision resources when necessary and then free them up and eliminate them as soon as they are no longer required.